I guess you could say you were vaccinated with the Mickey Mouse needle at birth, weren't you? <laughs> well, he's older than I am, actually, so yeah, I uh, had been around him for a long time. Your whole life. Um, what was your first introduction to the Disney philosophy? Can you remember what it was? No, I really don't. You know, I, I look back on my years of growing up around Stop. the studio and... Uh, <laughs> Since I never write these things, okay. Think you're ready? I never do the same answer either. So Good, so that's fine. We'll have some either. All right. Ready? I guess you could say you were vaccinated with a uh, Walt Disney Mickey Mouse needle at birth. Do you remember much about, you know, the Disney philosophy? Was it ever like drilled upon you? Okay, Roy, you're going to learn it this way. I don't think Walt himself ever really tried too hard to write down a philosophy, although there are plenty of quotes lying around and, you know, from through the years. Uh, it was more of a just a kind of a gut sense that uh, this is good and this is not so good or that sort of thing. Um, growing up around it, I didn't know anything about it. I just, I thought I had a totally normal childhood, frankly. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I was in my 20s before I kind of looked back and realized I'd grown up around 300 crazy artists and that that doesn't happen to everybody, you know. And a lot of that through the years kind of rubbed off on me in terms of my sensitivity towards the, the medium and the art and, and the business. I've always said that Fantasia, and I know you're working on what's coming up with that in a few years. I always said that was Walt Disney's hippie movie. <laughs> that was maybe going back to his crazy oh, were, youth or something with all the colors, and that was Walt's look at the 60s long before the 60s ever came There were out. a lot of rumors that somebody was smoking something when they were making that movie, and, and, and none of them true. But uh, I think that was Walt's uh, real step towards really making a statement that this is an art form and not necessarily just a commercial medium. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm trying to do now with, with some new stuff for Fantasia, is to give us the chance to experiment and look forward into the future of what animation can do and do it in smaller kind of bites in such a way that you don't have to commit yourself to some style or technique for a whole feature. Wasn't there a time there, and I get my decades a little mixed up, either 70s or 80s, that the, the Disney empire was like teetering for a little bit and it had to be straightened out because it's certainly going great now and it's going to go on long as I know I'm alive. It was uh, really it started in kind of the decade after Walt died in 66 and my dad in 71 and it was after that really that there was an awful lot of people looking around over their shoulders saying what would Walt have done, what uh, what wouldn't he have done, oh Walt wouldn't have done that. I mean that, that kind of a thing which just creatively is just totally stultifying and non-creative uh, and it just took a long time it kind of caught up with the company finally in, in 84, which was when we had sort of the Palace Revolution mm -hmm. and brought in uh, Michael Eisner and Frank Wells and Jeffrey Katzenberg and a very large number of others. Um, and we began to get back to, and I sort of came back too at that time, I'd been away and, and suggested that we ought to be looking at animation again as the roots and the, the fundaments on which everything else because everything in this company evolves around something that was created with pen and ink. I mean, everything yeah. you see is a ride. Every successful television show in the history, every successful film, it all began with a pen and ink. It all started from, you know, right up in here. And, and when, you, when you kind of bind that up by worrying about what somebody else is going to think about it, who isn't here to tell you, uh, then you've got a problem. And, and we're, we're well past that period. Isn't it hard, though? This stuff is so expensive to make. These movies are, I can't, I mean, you don't ever talk about the budgets, but I know they cost more than just about any, you know, regular movie with actors that you see. Isn't that pretty they much are correct? Not, they are not inexpensive. Yeah. But on the other hand, they have a kind of a life that ordinary movies don't uh, in terms of the spin-offs of music and merchandise and, and rides in the park and walk around characters and, and any number of kind of little bonus benefits and when you add that all up, given that you make good movies and they're successful, now that's that's really the trick. Uh, everything else follows and they become a, an extremely profitable enterprise commercially as well as artistically. So what is the Disney Corporation, what are they most proud of artistically? What was the greatest accomplishment? Is it something like a Mickey Mouse that's been able to be like almost like the drink Coca-Cola to be such a recognized Trademark or what? Lord is knows Mickey is around the world. <laughs> there isn't, you can't go any place without Mickey there. 
But I think more than that, I think it's the, just the sense of joy that, that we've brought to people it's through any number of films and parks and, and that sort of thing. I think that's the thing we all are, are probably proudest of is that, that, you know, people walk out the gate or go out of the theater and they're smiling. And they've had that moment or hour or day without having to worry about all the rest of that stuff in their mm -hmm. lives, and all, a lot of them do, of course, but they, they at least have a moment to get away from it. And I think, you know, that's a big contribution to a lot of people's lives. It certainly made a lot of people happy over the years. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Last one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Steve.